Okay. All right, looks like we are recording. Hello, Dr. Susan Albright. How are you today? Very good. Thank you awesome. for having me. Thank you so much for joining us on this Zoom call tonight. Um, can you first tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? <laughs> I'm, I'm Dr. Susan Albright, and I've been a veterinarian uh, since 1985. Oh, that's been a while here, so it's like 35 years. I can't believe that I'm saying wow. that. <laughs> you 12 when you went to college, or pardon? <laughs> 12 when you went to college? Yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. My my dad always said I was a professional student, um, mm -hmm. which it, it, I I think that I think he was onto something because I'm always all about learning and you know more and more and more. I just can't get enough of some of that stuff. But mm -hmm. I came to. Um, Chanoa. I've been here ever since I graduated and then I ended up buying the practice and it was originally um, a true 50-50 practice, 50% 50 uh, large animal, 50% small animal and the large animal was primarily hogs and so oh, I, yep, I knew hogs because I got a job on a hog farm when I was an undergrad because I needed this other, I, I knew I knew horses, dogs, and cats, because I grew up with horses. I always had my dogs and cats, but I, I felt I needed some other farm animal experience. So I got a job on a hog farm and worked there all through undergrad and until I was a sophomore in, uh, in vet school. And so when I got out, I really felt like I knew hogs and horses. And so when I came here, uh, you know, as well as the, the small animals, and there was a big um, horse community here that really didn't have a vet. And the veterinarian that I, I Came into practice with here he, he would do the horses but he wasn't real fond of them wasn't a fan of it yeah and so it was, it was always a great compliment it's like oh we're so glad that we finally have a horse person and so that went on for um it came in 85 and then in the early 90s the hog market tanked mm. and we lost like 25 percent of our business uh-huh. And so, but what that did was it actually opened the door. And by then I was kind of wondering, I was seeing things and I wanted to know, I was just one of those kids that go, but why, but why? <laughs> Let's, you know, why? Yeah, why mommy? And um, <clears throat> that actually opened the door for me to go do my holistic studies with um, chiropractic and then acupuncture and then essential oils and herbs came all about that time. So that, that was, that was kind of like my journey in in the the mid to late 90s and i was introduced so so the, the whole scope of the practice has changed from a mixed practice but was truly 50 50 and the large animal was basically hogs and horses and now it's, it's kind of changed and my large animal i still have one hog client that i bleed hogs <laughs> every quarter uh, for his validation yeah. and um but the large animal part is is mainly horses and i do a lot of chiropractic with them. Do, do a little bit of the traditional, don't do much vaccinating anymore. Um, I have other um, thoughts on that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so that's where I'm at now is primarily a, an integrative practice. Cool. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that there's some, there's a bunch of people on here and the folks that are not Young Living members may, I mean, if whoever invited you to watch this Zoom, please reach out to that person if you would like to ask more questions or you absolutely may reach out to myself. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Um, so reach out to me or whomever introduced you to this Zoom call um, if you would like more information. Okay, depending on if you're a member or not a member. All right, so, all right, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. Um, what first turned you on to using essential oils? What made you see like, Oh gosh, hmm, maybe that really works. What do you, what, you know, what kind of? Um, well, um, a classmate of mine who, uh, she, she's also my, my upline here in Young Living, she, she's the one that I kind of followed down this um, holistic path, Dr. Deb Rykoff. And she started doing chiropractic and I'm just kind of going, what? And, and like, what's she, going on? Yeah. Well, and then she came and adjusted one of my horses, which I thought she broke my horse <laughs> when the horse had some reactions to her her treatment, her adjustments. And then all of a sudden, after a while, I kind of realized, hey, this is this my horse is doing better. And then I started having her come in and work on some of my clients' animals. And then she started with acupuncture. I'm like, what? <laughs> 
What? <laughs> she acupunctured me a couple of times. I'm, I don't know if I should say that or not. But then it was like, wow. So it's like, I got to go learn this. So I mean, I, I, I call myself her, her lemming. I kind of followed her off that cliff. And then she started in essential oils. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was, um, I, I, I was at a point in my life where I, I was, I was actually, I was getting out of a, a very bad relationship and I was uh, spending some time up there and she goes, here, you need this. And so a lot of times people talk about their first oil that they come in contact with is maybe Val or back in, in my day when I first started back in, um, yeah. I was introduced in 2001, got my own account with Young Living in 2002. But in 2001, the end of 2001, I was up there with Dr. Deb. And she's like, here, you need this oil. And I'm like, what is it? And, she's and like, what was it? What was it? Release. Okay. And okay. And she said, um, put release over your liver. Because, you know, I, I, was, I was basically an emotional wreck. And I'm going, what? <laughs> so I put it over my liver. And then she said on the grounding, because I, I was really having a hard time focusing. Kind of, so I couldn't keep a thought in my head. And she said, you need, to, you need to ground yourself. So put grounding on. And she said, put it, you know, down in the center of your chakras. I'm going, chakras? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? That's a chakra, right? Yeah. So, so those were um, those were the two oils. Oh, you've that, frozen up on me. Oh, know. I'm sorry. I thought you froze up on me. <laughs> okay. So those are the two oils that I that I started with. And I was I was up there, I was spending uh, time over the weekend with her, and so I was putting these oils on and you know get done with the oils, I, I go into the bathroom and I wash my hands. And I come back out, she goes, what did you just do? And I said, wash my hands. She goes, you don't wash your hands after putting the oils on. You rub them wherever else you think you, you know, just rub them on your body. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So that, she sent me home with release and grounding and I used them, she sent me home with a book. And it, it just it just started this this love affair, and I I've, I've got reference books all I mean I'm surrounded <laughs> right now by reference why. books, and yeah. it was like my I kept one I I still have one on my bedside table. It's like my my I read it before I go to sleep. So that's just really kind of, yeah. you still you're still really really like you need you need it you need yeah. you're sucking all that energy in yeah. and really learning I, all the time. I started, I, you know, with the oils and the frequency, it, it kind of turned me on to the whole energy thing. I've been through the Healing Touch for Animals program, and this whole energy is something I, I, it really resonated with me, and so I'll, I'll just pick up a book, literally, I'll just pick up a book um, before I go to bed from my bedside table, and I'll just open it up, and it's like, oh, okay, so let's see, what are we looking at here? We are looking at clove bud oil in this book. And I'll just read about it. This this is what I do every night before I go to bed. <laughs> okay, that's exciting. Yeah. It is for you, though. It is for you. Yeah. So when did you, when did you start using them in your practice, and what were people's reactions? <laughs> <laughs> well, I started using them uh, basically with diffusing, and um, you know, this this practice we've got kind of a unique way that our, our ventilation and our, our heating and everything is because the, the person, Dr. Schlater that I bought the practice from, he was always very, very adamant about not smelling like, um, you know, so, some vet clinics you go in, you know, you, you smell the animals, you smell the, the cleaning and all that stuff. And, and he, you smell, he, the urine, you smell the things. Yeah. 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 He, took, he took great pride in saying, you know, that one of his big uh, compliments was when people come in and said, does it smell like a, a clinic? Cause we have separate, furnace units and all that stuff. So, um, but it, it's still a vet clinic. We work with animals. You're going to have accidents. And so the first oil that I used in the clinic, I, I did a lot of diffusing. And by, by now, I'm sole owner of the practice. Okay. And purification was the one that we used all the time. And everybody loved it. And that was back when we really didn't have the water-based diffusers then. And so oh. it, was, it was the, the little ones that looked just the little brass. Um, yeah, yeah. With, the, with yeah. the glass. And then I found some others like that. And we would have straight purification on that, you know, a straight oil diffuser. It wasn't water-based at all. 
And hmm. so we, we did a lot of that and I figured out how to make that last. So you aren't blowing through a bottle of purification. Yeah. In yeah. Two or three days. Mm -hmm. but so I started with diffusing and then, um, the, the next big boon, it, you know, it was, a, it was a while there was, was the thieves household cleaner. I now clean right. everything here with the thieves house counters cleaner. and floors and kennels and all the things, the water bowls, everything. Right. Yep. Yep. I should, I should have brought George in here. He's, he's our parrot. Um, this is not George. <laughs> oh, God, George didn't do so well, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was our, that was his Halloween costume. Oh. <laughs> oh, I did see pictures of that. And George is like sitting right next to the diffuser and he's yeah. loving it. Yeah. 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 He, he's been here now for, oh gosh, he's been here for probably um, over 12 years. My, my dad passed away about 15 years ago and then my mom started traveling and George came to live here. And he was here all the time, you know, during the winter anyway, but he's always been around the diffusers. Um, we clean his cage with the thieves household cleaner. His bowls get cleaned with the thieves dish soap. So, you know, everything thieves. And he's you know, pretty our, healthy, right? Yeah. 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 He's fine. He's fine. Mm -hmm. So then with, with my chiropractic work and the acupuncture work and, and, you know, with what Valor can do, uh, from a, a balancing perspective, it was just, it was just a completely natural fit on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what was your biggest, oh my gosh, with using essential oils with someone's horse or your own horse that someone was like, wow, that is so cool. I mean, what, what was it and, and what do you use it for? There, there's so many of them. <laughs> there, there's so many of them. Um, I should have thought of this ahead of time, but the, <laughs> the one that I, the one that I, I can think that I can think about, I was, at, I was at a horse show for the horses. I was at a horse show and I have a little, um, he's a little guy. He's, he's, uh, I, I, I used to team pen and, and, and sort, and we were at this little county fair sorting and we were in this big grandstand warming up and you know how horses don't always appreciate mules or donkeys. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I get that. And these, these two guys came in there. Was, one was on a big mule. One was on a small mule and we're warming up and, and my guy is kind of eyeballing them and, you know, getting to be a little skitty. And then right in front of the grandstand, and this is on one of those hard tracks that they kind of disc up a little bit. And the, the donkeys or the mule, sorry, the mule stopped in front of the grandstand and started braying. Oh. And my guy lost his mind. What, lost his mind. Lost, lost his mind. mind. The guy that was right next to his horse totally freaked out, bucked him off, and is is running around the arena. Oh gosh! I'm trying to keep mine under control, and my pride wouldn't let me get off. I really wanted to bail. I really wanted to bail. <laughs> I didn't want to do that in front of the in front of the grandstand. And I managed to get out to the gate, and then I bailed. And I walked him back to the trailer because I had another horse I needed to warm up. And so I tied him up, I was getting my other horse ready, and this guy, his name's Roni, was just pitching a fit, just pitching a fit. He's, he's rearing up. I was like, there's no way I could leave him. I could take the other horse. There's no way I could take the other horse because he was either going to hurt himself, you know, damage the trailer. I was more worried about him hurting himself. Mm -hmm. So my Western brain, and this was, I was still pretty new to the oils, but I had a, a case of them with me. I was, even, that, even back then, I had my, my vet kit, and then I had my oil kit. And okay. my Western brain was saying, you need to sedate him. You need to tranquilize him, you know, get the ACE. And, but then I'm sitting here thinking, but I can't ride him if I do that. <gasps> I have the oils. So I got out peace and calming. Okay. And he rubbed it together, put it in front of his nose and he just buried his head. Really? I felt like, I felt like it was like suction. <laughs> He loved it, huh? He loved oh, he, it. He, he was just soaking it in and his ears just kind of went like this. And his eyes softened probably. Yeah. Totally calmed down. And I'm like, I think I can, I can leave now. <laughs> so I took my other horse, warmed him up. And then I just made sure I, 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 I slathered him with it. I really, truly, you know, had it all over him and just made sure I knew where those mules were. And we did great the rest of the night. But it was did just, you? it was just amazing because, because people had seen him and you know saw my struggle with them and they're like is that the same horse i'm like yeah isn't this cool <laughs> isn't this cool <laughs> yeah so so peace and calming saved the saved the night on that one at the horse show mm -hmm. 
That's really cool. Um, so do you have a toolbox in, in your personal barn with essential oils and, you know, yep. veterinarian things? Yeah, I, I have it. Um, yeah, if, it, if my, my vet kit that I carry with, with all the medications and everything, I, 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 have, I know I have deep relief in there. I have uh, purification. I have grounding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just telling a story today about um, a, a stud that I used to adjust. And he was, you know, great horse, but he would just kind of pick at you all the time. And you're like, you know, get off me, get off me while you're trying to adjust him. Mm -hmm. And so it, it just came to me. I put valor around all of his um, coronary bands yeah. and I used release and grounding down his cannon bones, you know, like thinking of putting the energy into the ground and just calming him down. Okay. okay. And he loved that. And he would just get real relaxed. His ears would go to the side. He would, he's a stud. He would get really relaxed. Okay. I gotcha. <laughs> and one day I was working on another horse. I knew he was next. And so I had my assistant start putting these oils on and the owner came around the corner and he stopped and he looked at the horse and he's just sitting there zoning. And he's like, he said, you just turned my stud into a gelding. And I said, yes, I did. And yeah. he get a great adjustment and I won't get beat up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when people bring their pets to your practice, um, do they have options of traditional medicine or to use like, okay, you might suggest let's try X, Y, Z, you know? Right, yeah. And so th th we have, you know, I, I have a, a whole gamut of clients. Some, you know, just want the straight traditional stuff. Yes, I still spay and neuter. I do minimal vaccinations. Um, we, we talk a lot about diet, diet, diet. <laughs> and so th these are all things that I've, I've learned over the years um, where, you know, less is more, even you know, from a traditional standpoint, from vaccinations, and depending on, I, I look at things a lot differently as far as trying to support the animal's natural innate ability to make itself right, you know, that whole homeostasis thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I, I have lost some clients, to be honest. <laughs> um, I had one You're gal. Still busy enough. Pardon me? You're still busy enough, by oh, the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back, back in the beginning when I first started chiropractic, um, had a gal bring. A golden retriever in it for to have his anal glands um, expressed. It was it was doing the scooting thing, and I just said, you know, if this keeps up, you know, if, if this returns or we're still having some problems, we might want to look at uh, doing a chiropractic adjustment. And the gal just kind of looked at me and she's like, huh? I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's something we can talk about if it continues. She she left, and literally 30 minutes later, she called and transferred her records <laughs> to another clinic. People yeah. have the right to choose. People yeah, have yeah. And th this was before oil. So yeah. the, the one fun little thing I have, especially when I started doing um, acupuncture and we, we do use some moxa, so it does have a specific uh, scent to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so moxa smells a lot like, um, like marijuana when you burn it. And it, it's an herb that we might, we might burn over the acupuncture points. But I have a sign in the, in, um, I have a sign in the front of my clinic that says the witch is in and she's casting spells. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. Um, um, okay. So I'm going to ask you one more question. Then I'm going to ask um, if anybody has any quick questions, not okay. necessarily just keeping in mind though, that you can't diagnose or right. you know, treat or anything, but you know, some general questions yeah. of, of folks. So my next question would be, what's the difference that you see between young living essential oils and <laughs> something that they would buy at the gas station. Oh. What's the difference? Oh my gosh. I, I, I have cases where I have pictures on this and the, the quality is such, I, I, I can't use any, anything else on that. Um, this isn't my case, but it, it's another veterinarian that uses Young Living Oils. And he was, use, he was having it use, um, them use lavender on a horse that he had stitched up around the wound on, on mm -hmm. the leg and they ran out and they went to the grocery store lavender's lavender right and the lavender they, wrong. they got wrong exactly they actually got it was lavendin with the high camper component of lavendin blew the leg up with no way hours. Oh, yeah i had um 
I, I, again, there's just so many of them. I yeah. had a gal who was, it was a Weimarammer, and he had some, some redness around his eyes, a little conjunctivitis, and I, I it was, it was he was having some environmental exposure that he shouldn't have been having. And I suggested, you know, doing the cupping and the ringing with, around the eyes with lavender and frankincense. And she, she was, um, uh, she, she had been using oils. Well, no, she's not going to use that. She's going to use a different brand. And the eye, the dog's eyes just blew up. Oh God. And so, you know, and then she's calling me. I'm like, okay, you know, really, truly let's fess here. What, what did we do? And so she told me and she had not, she, I had put, I had shown her how to put the oils on in the clinic. So I had the, the, you know, my oils <laughs> on. Mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. went home and did something else. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You don't want to do that. If you don't know the source and the purity, if you can't call up that company and say, hey, mm -hmm. where do you get your, you know, lavender yeah. from or whatever, um, you, yeah. you know, it's, it, yeah, you got to know your source. You have to be mindful. Yep. Yeah. I have people that come in. I had one gal come in and she brought oils from like seven different companies. And there was Young Living and some others. And she said, well, but I diffuse the cheap ones. These others are too expensive to use. It's still getting into the bloodstream. It's still yeah. getting into the body. Hello? <laughs> so we had a discussion. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. That's another, crazy. another time a gal brought in some oils. She said, well, I use these oils. It was from a company I'd never heard of. And so I said, well, let's call them up. So called him oh. up, and so I mean, right there, and I said, "Hi, I'm, I'm Dr. Albright with Shell Veterinary Clinic, and I just had some questions about the essential oils that uh, you know that, that this owner is using, and um, you know, started asking where do they come from? You know, are they tested? You know, do they do they have the farms that type of thing?" And um, the, the gal got really frustrated. She goes, "Let me get to my manager," and oh. so I started asking the manager. And finally, the manager was getting a little frustrated. She said, you know what? We just get him in a 50-gallon steel drum, and we, it just comes in a drum. We put him in our bottle, put a label on it. Yikes. Run for your life. <laughs> Pretty much. Literally, yeah. literally yeah. run for your life. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So there is, there is definitely a big difference, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I see we have a question from Jackie. Can you see what it is? Let's see here. I can, I can tell you if you can't see okay. it. Okay, yeah. Okay. Any favorite books that talk about where to put oils for specific situations? Many books are just general in terms of which oils you use and don't give much information on where and how. Um, can we talk about some of the references? Um, yeah, we get the animal, the desk, animal desk yeah. reference. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if she's talking specifically about animals or people. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, for animals, the animal desk reference. See, I told you I have them all around. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. That, that was not planned, but it's here. Um, that's a good one. And um, this actually kind of leads into, into my course for the, for the animals that just came out. But, um, you know, the, the, the EODRs from Life Science had some information on that. And what I always tell people... Oh, there, there's lots of, uh, there's lots of books. Um, can I talk about my other Facebook page? Um, I don't know why not. Okay. okay. There's another Facebook page, Essential Oils in a Pet Home. It's a private group. Essential Oils in a Pet Home. You have to ask to be um, added to that. And I've done a whole video there where I talk about a lot of different references on that. But when you, when you, uh, learn how and where to put the oils on. A lot of times it's, it's site specific if you're going, you know, uh, for a certain condition. But I always tell people slow, low, and observe. You just don't want to be dropping a lot of oils on on the animal. Right. And, so low and slow. Low right. and slow. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times I you can never go wrong diluting the oils. I personally rarely dilute the oils because I'm either going to put one or two drops on my hand, rub my hands together. And then pet wipe stroke you know, over the area. You don't have to part the hair and get it down on the skin. The 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 fur, the hair will actually wick it to where right, it needs right. to be. Uh -huh. And using it a small amount more frequently is is way better than dropping a whole bunch on at at, at one time. Okay. And so um where so to answer your question on that then, the animal desk reference then would be your best 
for animals per se or right. and and for people do you have a favorite one for people um or not necessarily i mean not necessarily brand specific but just yeah the 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 the, the life science published one for people is good um you know in, ter in terms of application there, there's sections in there that in, in these books that talk about that i don't have a specific one um specifically for application now we we talk about that in depth with videos and everything in in the course that that um, we just released so if you want you know actual videos to see how to do it we we, we have it in that course any of the young living um sites as well like you can right. go to the young living and they have yeah. videos up the wazoo about right. how to yeah. use the seedlings or how to use the lavender how do you you know whatever mm -hmm. you know to be um compliant in that way i'm um, okay yeah. so um and let dr lindsay elmore too maybe i mean she's got a couple of books what yeah. do you think of hers i mean yeah like, yeah her for for um like her her one that's talking about uh 50 questions yep. now i don't i don't necessarily agree with what she says about cats <laughs> that's a, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing and a lot of the information out there about cats is stuff that's just being repeated and repeated and repeated um but i have five clinic cats that live next to the diffusers mm -hmm. we diffuse citrus we clean with the the thieves cleaner so it it, it can be done great it be done. but it's um, about so, the quality of the oil right exactly um and we have a question from keith are there any oils you wouldn't use with horses rabbits sheep and pigs okay we use the animal desk reference guide but was just wondering if there are any that you would say shouldn't go with yeah Okay, I have a great video on that too, on the essential oils in a pet home page. But the thing is, when you're working with Young Living oils, it's, it's all about the quality. And when you work with Young Living oils, the way I look at it is I don't go from a do not use list. And that's, that's what you know, freaks so many people out. If you Google what, you know, toxic oils, oh my gosh, there's all kinds of lists and everything out there but you're not talking about a specific company. It's just this stuff in general. And I've used Young Living Essential Oils since 2001, 2002. And if you use them appropriately, you're, you're gonna be fine. If there's an oil on some of these lists, when you look at them out there, I've never heard of these oils. And when you look them up, there's, not, there's some not so good things about yeah. these oils. And so basically I've come down to the point that if Young Living doesn't have it or it's not in a blend that Young Living has, I don't want it. <laughs> okay, and, okay, okay. Um, there, I mean, there, they have so many to choose from, you know. Right. I mean, there's gotta be something, you know, some way that you could figure out, you yes, know. Exactly. Um, and and people have to do their own homework right. i mean we can't say you need to you you know people got to do their own homework too you know they got to be you know just like if you were buying a car you got to do your homework you know you get what you pay for yeah and you have to be aware of your own your pet's health status too and so you do need to work with i mean i do encourage people to work with their their veterinary health care team and it, it, it i i understand it can be a challenge to you know some veterinarians just are not versed in essential oil use, but you do need to um, bring that to their attention. And um, if, you're, if you're using the right references, you're going slow and low, they, they, they can, you can do both traditional and you know, mm -hmm. essential oils. I do that all the time, right. but you might get some pushback you know, from, from veterinarians that, that aren't necessarily versed in that or, or open-minded about it. Right, and, and, and it's changing. Times are changing. Times are a little, you know, they're a little bit more open with it, but you know, it's, it's hard to, to change people's minds because we've been you know, so far removed from that since 150 years ago even, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been a big change. Um, well, I think we have an, oh, we got one more question. Let's see. Second question. How do you approach people that are against using oils in or around their animals, both pets and farm? Well, <laughs> we don't have time for that here today. <laughs> well, you kind of got to know as, as a veterinarian when, I, when I'm working on the farm, because I, I do have some, I have had some people say, I don't want to do any of that weird stuff. I don't want to do that. And that's okay. That's their, yeah. that's their choice. Oh, yeah. That's your choice. And 
sometimes, so I, it's not like I'm, I'm pushing it and say, oh, here, we got to do this. And, and sometimes it's an option, but a lot of times the people that are coming to me for chiropractic acupuncture, again, it's just a natural fit right into that with them. Awesome. Yeah, you, people have to do their homework and obviously people have the right to their opinion, you yep. know? So, um, and again, I want to reiterate that um, if anyone on this page is not a Young Living member and they would like some more information, please reach out to the people who invited you to this page or reach out to me um, or whatever. And I want to thank so much, Dr. Susan Albright, for, for being with us this evening. And go ahead and check out that page. That, um, that What was that page? There, there's a couple pages, um, Essential Oils in a Pet Home, it's, a, it's a, a private group, but then I'd also encourage everybody to take a look at the, this course, um, the, the, there's a set of courses that's available from Animal Sense University. It's something that, that Kate Brown and I have put together, it's been a year in the, in the making, but it's Animal Sense University, you can find us on Facebook, and we go into great detail for dogs, cats, and horses, going through the, the body systems, and we show a lot of um, application. Mm -hmm. There is um, references to go along with that. Tons of downloads. It's it's so much material. That's why it took us so long. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But that that's um, something that we wanted it to be an online at your fingertips um, essential oil resource for you too. So in addition to some of the great books that we have available, you, you have this that you can actually see how we're using the, the, the oils in everyday situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, awesome. Um, I guess that's a wrap for this evening. If anybody else has anything, um, oh, we got a couple. Oh, they're just people just saying thank you. Yeah, That's thank all. you everyone for being here, and, and thank yes, you, Chris, thank for having you. me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Stay Take warm. Care. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye thank now. You. Bye bye now.